Hi, this is your host Sapin Bharatiya and welcome to another episode of TFI Let's Talk. And today we have with us Mike Howe, VP of Product Marketing at Glueware. Mike, it's great to have you on the show. Great to be here. Thanks for having Glueware back on your show. It's great to have you folks, uh, of course, back on the show again. And today we are going to talk about a lot of things, but I want to start with, uh, I mean, if you look at the modern businesses, of course, there are a lot of businesses that were like born in the whole cloud native era, a lot of businesses that were around there for a long time. So different businesses are in different stages of their business transformation. Uh, we talk about a lot of other things, cloud and everything else, but uh, we don't talk about the importance of network. So I would like to understand, you know, the importance of not only network, but also the network automation or automated network as a platform, what role they play, not only in business transformation, but business are tied to success and a lot of other factors are there. So talk about that. That's a great question. I mean, I think it it really kind of is starting to bring things together here with um, this theme and this movement that Gartner has really brought to, to bear called hyper automation. And that's this notion that, you know, while while there's been such a focus on, you know, cloud and get to cloud and and whatever cloud native and, and these other things is that large enterprise, you know, we're talking enterprises that their core business is not technology. So you can think, you know, banks and financials and pharmaceuticals, technology is an enabler for them, but really historically they see technology as a cost and they see the network as a cost, right? And, you know, I kind of came up in networking myself in, in the in the early 90s and that's when networking was hot, really. That was the explosion of the internet. And the network was considered uh, where you'd want to put your resources. Everyone talked about building out the network. Nowadays, you, you, really, the, the focus is on building out AI. And, it's it, you know, the, the hot thing kind of keeps moving. Security has been really hot for a while. So what I would say is, you know, the, while some of, let's say, that focus in the industry has been taken away from the network, the network is still that key underlying layer that enables everything. It, essentially, without the network layer working and working efficiently and being secure, you don't have the plumbing for any of the applications to work. Your AI systems aren't going to work. Your your connectivity to the cloud is not, not going to work. And so, you know, I think that's where um, when when the hyper automation movement now has, has been coming, it's a focus bringing, bringing it back to being really considering the end-to-end process or how the application is delivered and considering all aspects of that, that does fundamentally start with the network. And I think that's a, a key hallmark to to start and ensure your network is automated to be able to move on to those next more complicated things. Talk a bit about, uh, once again, when we talk about the cloud, the whole stack, we talk about storage, CPU is there, of course, networking is there. Uh, Talk about some of the challenges that, because first of all, in old IT days, there were different silos. Storage was silo, networking was silo, security was silo. Now we are talking about DevOps, everything is moving, shift left is happening. Talk about some of the major challenges that kind of look like intimidating uh, for enterprise customers. So when they look at their automation goals and they're like, they look at these as challenges. Yeah, uh, you know, a takeaway from that that I have, I can I can share with you is that there has been this significant move from task oriented, which is silo oriented behaviors to process oriented behavior and, and business outcomes. And I think that's that's a key that's a change that's happening in the technology, but it's happening in automation. And um, again, tied to hyper automation, there is this movement towards you. You've been hearing things like robotic process automation, RPA technologies out there automate backend systems and application layer. Well, now Glueware is also, and, and other companies are, you know, on this path, applying process automation to the networking layer and enabling it through API connections and integrations to accomplish end-to-end -end processes. So when you do that, you're able to kind of begin to break down the silos. Um, and this, this we can really go off on a tangent here because it, it really do, does become a people process technology type of problem because you may have technology that can be inter integrated and span across multiple domains or silos. But if organizationally you're, you're not prepared for that, it becomes a problem. And I think that's where you need, you need leadership that is, sees si silos as problems and is asking and challenging the organization to enable 
that kind of cross pollination from a people standpoint and enable the technology and the processes so that your technology can actually uh, automate end to end. And this is really key because it's not just about uh, some technical change. Like where I'm, you know, have a foot in marketing. So I was kind of on that hype bandwagon for software defined and for intent based. And these are kind of technology approaches, but at the end of the day, you're looking at things that can transform the business. And so breaking down the silos, enabling especially things like automation to work across your silos from security and cloud and storage and the networking infrastructure to accomplish a business goal, that really changes things. And it really ties to high level priorities like compliance, security, and being uh being highly efficient to deliver on a net, uh, on a on a business initiative. You're talking about cultural uh, point, but let's also talk about uh, technical side of because culture is a harder problem to solve. Uh, technology is actually easier problem to solve. Talk a bit about what kind of solutions are available, pre-built solutions are available, especially from Gluver's perspective, which do kind of uh, reduce some of these pain or address these pain points. Gluver is in a unique position because. In the industry, for more than 10 years, there's been this big movement towards automation equals programming. It, it means you have to jump into Py in the networking world, you have to jump into Python, you have to learn Ansible, and it's a very low-level process. And uh, while a lot of these technologies are open source, there's a lot of hidden costs. And so, you know, from the management side, they viewed, well, you know, are you automating? And your teams would say, you know, yes, we're automating, but they never really dug into how and how long it took to automate and what the cost was to automate. So Glueware's unique position is delivering a suite of applications that deliver automated automation capabilities really kind of out of the box with network inventory and config drift monitoring and con configuration auditing, and then moving towards your configuration management, all with a no-code approach. And then about a little over a year ago, we introduced network RPA, which is process automation. And that's really been a fundamental shift in what I was talking about earlier is evolving from task-based automation to process automation. Network RPA enables the orchestration of the automation. So you can do an audit before you make a config change, or you can verify a state before and after an, an OS upgrade. And you can integrate APIs so you can tie into things like your ServiceNow platform or your Remedy platform, you know, for ticketing, ITSM, or source of truth integration. And that those API integrations and I almost, you know, uh, not even jokingly kind of talk about automating the automation. Oftentimes, you know, you people have automation, but they're individual low-level scripts or playbooks. And there's some human doing a lot of work before and after it. And ultimately, that's not highly effective. So that's where Glueware, with our out-of-the-box suite of applications that have purposeful apps as well as process automation, that's really where we're helping enterprises accelerate their automation journey. Talk a bit about some of the recent update. Of course, you folks came out with Glueware 5.1 as well. Uh, just talk, talk about uh, some of the updates there. And also, if you look at what is the evolution curve of Glueware, uh, let's talk about 5.1, and then we can also talk about what the next thing that you folks are working on. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, some, sometimes, you know, when you hear a release number 5.1, you think, oh, it's a minor release. <laughs> we don't actually... Uh, we we don't actually use the first number as a major only. Uh, usually the first number indicates like something really significant in the app. Like when we introduced our topology app, we went from our 4.x to 5.x. So 5.1 is a major platform release. It, it consists of about four months of development. We usually have about three major platform releases a year. And then we do uh, package releases every two weeks. So sometimes customers or people say, well, I can't, how do you, you know, get new features in your product if you're only having two or three releases a year. And the answer is, well, we have package updates that come every two weeks that deliver functionality. So 5.1 had really kind of four key buckets of capability. Um, the, the first is around our platform itself. We introduced a new creden centralized credential management. And um, I, I mentioned it a little bit before, but Glueware, it sells into the very large and complex enterprise a lot of them are in, you know, financials and pharmaceuticals and highly regulated industries. They have requirements around password management and things like related to that um, for compliance and conformance. So 
Glower's introduction of a centralized credential manager really simplifies things and can assist with processes like when you add devices into the Glueware system, you don't have to add them with credentials. All of that can be centrally managed and you know you don't have to import and put you know some clear text password in some file or it just so that that is really about centralizing and standardization on a highly encrypted password scheme as well as the ability to integrate with third party uh, credential managers. So that that was that was the first big rock. The second is around our network RPA app, as I've been talking about the process automation. We've had really great adoption of this throughout our customer base. So we've introduced new capabilities like uh, error handling with try-catch logic, being able to import and export your workflows, uh, a new state assessment capability that exposes our Glueware's uh, ability to just drop in state assessment at any point in a workflow. So a state assessment, you can think of like a show my BGP neighbors or look at my route counts or you know look at an interface status. You can drop any state assessment in anywhere in a workflow. It just makes it very flexible. And then really opening up the platform to expose programmatic objects that start and stop individual tasks. And what that just really means is like, if you run like it's a state assessment where you're doing a show IBGP neighbor, you get a block of result and Glueware can wrap that in JSON and make anything from that output programmatically accessible. So I can look at my neighbor count or various things like that. So that, that's really powerful. And the third major block, we introduced topology a little under a year ago, about, about, about summertime, late summer this last year. And um, topology is built for the visualization of the network and generating site documentation. And we just layered in more advanced features to that, like new layouts, link aggregation support, VLAN support. And then the fourth major bucket is just really expanding on vendor support. There's been a focus on supporting southbound APIs. So we've expanded our Cisco ACI support, our Cisco Meraki support, and even added other vendors like Versa Networks in this release. So it is a big release and our customers are really enjoying digging into all the features and uh, really expanding their automation. First of all, thanks you know, for, for talking about this release. Now, as I was uh, mentioning, you were talking about earlier the cultural. I want to go back to the cultural uh, point as well. Uh, we see a lot of you know cultural shifts happening. We talk about DevOps movement, DevSecOps, uh, shift left, chaos engineering, SREs, platform engineering. Talk a bit about what kind of culture movement you are seeing from networking perspective, or you still see there are still silos, and what is the right approach, how organizations should approach network automation projects? Yeah, so no, I think that people are excited about technology again, and I think we can you know, give some credit to the movement around AI and, and data and the importance of data. Someone said recently, I heard, well, uh, AI and ML is just statistics rebranded. I thought that was kind of funny because you could take a topic like statistics and it's kind of very dry, but all of a sudden you apply AI, ML, and it gets exciting. And I think that's sometimes what we need in our industry is a little bit of refreshing to make it new and exciting again. I mentioned the movements around software-defined networking or intent-based. It's easy to get kind of slip into low level. Like when you dive into API automation or integrating APIs, it can get kind of bland pretty quickly. But if you're able to have a leader who understands process automation can be transformative to your business and having products and people who can integrate APIs and build end-to-end -end automation and can look at and evaluate how you're automating and ensure your company's moving up into more modern approaches. I think that's the, the trap we fall into in technology is kind of getting stuck in old technology for too long. And what Gluer is offering and enabling customers is this acceleration path that's built on data modeling and that has built in API integrations and is fully customizable to expand those API integrations. And this starts to get exciting to business leaders because they realize they can accomplish those business goals of compliance and security and efficiency. So I think sometimes it's breaking down the silos, enabling cross-pollination, enabling your technology team's exposure into the other areas that, that gives them growth they don't feel pigeonholed in like just security or just storage or just networking. You get exposure into these other areas and th see how things work end to end. 
And you you really just um, expand in your business in terms of its ability to automate and its ability to deliver for the business. So I think that's um, a key takeaway that I'm seeing. And it's a nice trend that's happening. I think there's new energy uh, given to the networking teams and the infrastructure teams that are delivering technologies that ultimately power exciting technologies like AI ML. Are you happy with the culture shift that is happening or you feel that this is what we need, but not a lot of progress is happening and company need to do more? You're like, no, we are on the right path. The trends are all positive. I have the pleasure of working with very large enterprises and I can tell you they often vent frustration because the larger the organization, the harder to turn the ship, so to speak, right? It's just, um, it's it's di- change is difficult and change within organizations is difficult. So uh, I think it does vary. And I think that what you end up seeing is some of these old companies come under competitive pressure or they have a something, they have a hack or something that affects their business, right? Like a uh, an outage or some. So sometimes it takes a catalyst to create the change. That catalyst can come through new leadership joining the company uh, or organizational change. We we all know in technology, there's this whole emphasis on efficiency and, and cost savings, and there's been a lot of headcount reductions in organizations. And that puts more of an emphasis on automation. And so I, I think that the, the cultural and those types of problems are kind of, let's say, organizational specific. But I think everyone realizes that efficiency is important, automation is important, but from a people perspective, Giving the people opportunity to grow and expand beyond their single silo or domain, give them um, opportunities to learn and grow and solve unique and complex business challenges, then I think things can get really exciting. We work with uh, a very large pharmaceutical, and I was working with an engineer recently, and he said, you know, like, he literally said, like, our company's working on solving or, or, or and, you know, creating uh uh, ending cancer, really, like the treatment of critical diseases. They're not, so technology is just an enabler for that business to do that faster. And I think when you can frame it in that perspective of whatever your company's goal is and that your technology and the work you're doing is enabling that, then I think it it gets exciting. And that's why you see good, good leaders out there and leaders that uh, are moving a little slowly. And if you get out executed, chances are change is coming. Mike, thank you so much for taking time out today and of course talk about network automation and of course uh, updates to Bluebeard. Thanks for all those insights as well and I would love to chat with you again. Thank you. Thank you, Swapnil. Really enjoyed it. Take care.